Hey guys, we're gonna let's play Chrono Cross. Last time we got the remaining level seven techs for every character in the game, except for a few choice exceptions. Razzly's requires a whole nother playthrough of the game. Not gonna be able to do that. Uh, Sprig doesn't actually get one. And last but not least, where are we here, Pip? doesn't, I guess, get his until he evolves or doesn't. I, I don't know. We're not using Pip. Doesn't matter. Anyway, can I go in a thing? For some reason, the YouTube copyright really hates that song and it flags it all the time. It's really irritating. But regardless, we have Surge, Kid and Sprig along here. And the reason that we want these three in particular is this episode is going to be a little bit of a showcase of the uh, some of the additional techs. There are both double and triple techs in this game. There's only two triple techs, and of them, I'm only going to be able to show off one. And that requires us to become Slash. So after I recorded last, uh, last time's episode, I had to load back the save uh, right before I did it all, and do it all over again because I botched it up and didn't get access to Slash. Then I started to fight the Mystic Knights again, got all the way down to one enemy left, and then realized, like I even managed to get the lucky Flea Vest Steel that time. And then I got down to the last enemy and realized I forgot the Forgot Me Not Pot. Suffice to say, I had to fight them again, and this time I didn't get the uh, Flea Vest, but I'm never going to use it, so it doesn't matter. Alright. Probably should have took the Monster Mune off, but, uh, yeah, let's uh, get a few more hits in. Are you weak yet, or...? I need to build up. There you go. Now you're weak. All right. So I'll have you attack over here. And you need to build up enough element power to use all of the different triplex. And to be honest, I don't think I've ever personally used the triple techs of any of the characters in this game, as far as I remember. Oh, well, that was even one too many. Slash. Slash is an interesting one. We're going to do a three times. Wow, I did not expect it to be that weak. Uh, you're just up there. You actually have one extra. So let's waste a cure plus element on the arrow guard to heal it up a little bit so it can actually survive a hit. Slash does not have a lot of attack power. Uh, so you should survive that. Let's take a look at some of your elements here. Ice Blast, Cure Plus, a blue Dash and Slash, Ice Lance, Wind Slash, and an Iceberg element. Interestingly enough, none of these are highlighting anything special. If we go to one of our other characters, uh, video game, it's supposed to be red pin, flying arrow. That's why I was like, wait a minute, how did uh, how did that not work out? I was like, why is it not making any sense? Uh, let's cast a cure element on you. <laughs> Pretty sure I was already up there, but I guess I wasn't. That's not a lot. Um, we will have you cure plus it as well, since apparently I have no choice. Yeah, trying to do this against some of these enemies is a little tricky because they're, well, weak. All right, one more. So you do Ice Blast, that doesn't worry me at all. And now you need a chip shot. Please don't kill it. 
<laughs> okay, we're back, and I just decided to use different enemies instead because they're being a pain in the ass. In order to do this triple check, you need Z slide. I didn't know it indicated all the different characters there. That's interesting. Yeah, this one uses uh, Z slash, which is uh, uses Luminaire or no, sorry, dash and slash. My bad. No, it uses flying arrow. I. Uh, that's interesting. Yeah, flying arrow. It uses a red pin and it uses dash and slash, which uh, slash happens to have. He reminds. It definitely looks like an Akira Toriyama type of character. He reminds me of. Uh, what does he remind me of? It's someone from Dragon Ball Z. Maybe the uh, the Demon King guy in the Boo Saga. Regardless, I just he just looks kind of familiar. This is probably the first time I've seen this, or at least the first time I've done it myself. And you get an achievement for doing so. Decent amount of damage, considering no buffs. Now, the other triple tech requires Luminaire, Alina's Maiden Faith, and Razli's Raz Flower. As I indicated a little while ago, Razli does not have access to that one. She's got Raz Star, and she has Raz Heart. In order to show this one off, and you do get an achievement for it, you would need to do an entire second playthrough. Okay, and next we're... I'm, I'm going to do a lot of cutting around that song because the uh, YouTube copyright system is evil. Those enemies definitely do not appear here. Interesting. Okay, let's go for it. All right, I have not equipped these characters. As you can see, their uh, stats and the amount of damage they're dealing is kind of trash. A little more out of uh, Mickey. I think she's got a granite gauntlet on, so she'll do double... Oh, no, not double damage. I was thinking double damage because we fought machines last time. All right. And for this one, we're going to make use of Limelight and Dance on Air to do a double tech between... Uh, Nikki and Nikki. Uh, can we do it? Nope. I need to build up more stamina first. Basically, Surge is just here to finish off the fight. There we go. And it becomes Flamenco. All allies combine Dance on Air and Limelight. Now, I'm guessing those are both their dual techs. So here, what I can do is I can use up the rest of her stamina and take a look at what Nikki's does. All enemies plays heavy metal, so this attacks everyone. And if I just do this, it will reduce all of his stamina to nothing. We've already seen that. And now we'll get uh, Mickey's turn here. And Dance on Air also hits all enemies, but somehow together they do something else. Let's just have... Uh... I actually took the Master Mune off Surge, but he doesn't really need to do any attacking here. So I don't really think I need to do that. But uh, let's build up here. And we'll use this. It hits all allies. Let's uh, let's see what this does. Interesting. That's a performance. All powers temporarily increase. So I guess that would be accuracy to an extent. Uh, I'm assuming that's... It's not Eagle Eye that's on. Interesting. Definitely strengthen on, because I did uh, a lot more that time than I did the time before. I would assume it does a lot of the basic ones. High Res, Genius, Strengthen, 
Uh, probably nimble, so you're, you evade a little more, but it never seems to do anything. Anyway, we already showed off that, so let's just use the actually powerful one and finish off the rest of the fight there. Yeah, as far as a lot of the double techs in this game, save for maybe that one, which it does take two level... There we go. The, uh, a lot of the double techs, uh, the way the damage calculation works for the uh, physically based ones is that it's determined by the amount of uh, attack power of each individual tech that's part of the dual tech. So with X-Strike, dash and slash is power plus uh, dash and gash is power equals the total power you get. The only real additive you get from using it as a dual tech is hitting it all in one move and changing the elemental attribute. In the case of that, it's red. And that's... It, it's They're not really worth using a lot of the time. So it's other than for changing the elements, it's rarely something that I make good use of. Anyway, let's see what we have with the next one here. Here's an interesting uh, one. I went into the same whatever field it was, uh, the same pillar of light to end up here. So somehow this one is Sky Dragon Isle and fighting an enemy from Chronopolis under completely different music. Interesting. Strangely enough, the two characters that actually have a dual tech together have nothing to do with one another in the general scheme of the game and characterization or any of that. Guile and Sneff. I'm not exactly sure why they have a dual tech together. And of course, unfortunately, Sneff does not have very good. Uh, does not have very very good stamina recovery. Neither does Guile, for that matter. Go faster. I know I didn't get a chance to use a lot of the uh, characters over the course of the game. So hopefully showing off some of these dual techs where we have, in this case, Wanda Swords and Sword Trick lead us to Sword Storm. Hopefully this gives you kind of an idea of what you're dealing with with some of these characters. Well, I guess this makes a lot of sense to pair those two together now that I uh, now that I see Snap's tech, because I basically never use Snap ever. The damage ain't great, but um, yeah, the damage definitely is not very good. But what can you do? Maybe he's got high uh, magical defense, and I've just forgotten that. Now here's a couple of characters that I actually did use throughout my uh, playthrough. I don't think I used Groybeck much, but I did use him maybe once or twice. And we get a combination of the uh, strong arm tech that we got for Groybeck here in Chronopolis and Norse's top shot that we got from Norse himself. This one hits all enemies, so probably not the best demonstration on a single target, but that's all right. So that's what uh, that all-powerful weapon that we found looks like. And I think we already saw a top shot. Not a lot of damage. But it is designed to hit multiple enemies, so I guess I shouldn't be expecting it to be absolutely insane. And it didn't really matter anyway. A lot of the time, there are conveniences. Like, if they're weapon-based texts, the damage calculation is as I mentioned. If they're magic-based texts, then their damage is calculated in a different way. Uh, and I think in the case of a magical-based one, if I remember correctly, it takes the magical stat of the character you use to select the tech and applies that toward the damage calculation and it uses magic to calculate the damage. If they're uh, weapon-based techs or physical-based techs, 
then they're determined by the individual damage of each of their individual single attacks, and then just add it together. So the, phys or the physical or weapon-based ones are going to be substantially better. Uh, the magic ones might have some uses that I'm not familiar with, but other than, you know, X-Strike, there's not really any use for a lot of them, because a lot of them use level 7 techs. And with Dash and Slash, they use level 3 techs, which is a lot easier to build up to, and you can use it a lot earlier in the game. Our favorite duo is back. Zoa and Karsh. In this case, we're going to build up to Toss and Spike, his uh, level 7 tech, and we're going to pair it with... Let's see here, it's going to be green in the end, so let's demonstrate it on the uh, other guy. And we're going to pair it with uh, Dragon Rider on Karsh's side. So we have uh, or Dragon Spike. So let's use it on the yellow innate one, see if we can get some decent damage out of it. Awesome Spike isn't anything particularly special, but at least it does good damage. Though the Dragon Rider aspect doesn't seem to play a large role in that at all. Eh, it's decent. It's a level 3 and a level 7. Well, you need Neofeo and Turnip both together in the party in order to get uh, Turnip's level 7 tech. And for some reason, they have a dual tech together as well. It uses both of their level 7 techs. And, well, kind of enough said. Like, both of them are plant-based characters for some reason. None of them have any relevance at all to the plot, characterization, anything. Turnips, you know, got his nice little reference back to uh, Glenn. That's about it. The thing is, with so many of these characters and having these dual techs, there's not really a whole lot to them. So we're going to combine Bam 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 with uh, Veg Out in order to create Toss Salad. Um... That was unique, at least. <laughs> it's the first time I've ever seen that one. As with a lot of these, it's the first time I've seen them because I never bothered to do them before. I did X Strike and I did the uh, double take. You know, the I'm skipping over that and X Strike because we've seen those over the course of the LP already. Okay, we've got uh, two more to go here. This one uses Radius's Vital Energy and Viper's uh, Air Force. Sadly, I didn't have a better weapon for uh, Radius other than the Mithril Staff or the Silver Staff that he starts with because I never used any of the uh, any of those characters. Me, the Staff Wielders. Well, I guess technically I used Sprig, but not that that really matters. All right. Don't want to use Surge because he'll end up getting himself or getting something dead. And I'd rather not do that. Now, one of the things that I did over the course of the, uh, the LP is I demonstrated how to get pretty much all of the achievements, even without really going into a lot of focus on it. And the way, uh, I think a couple of the ones that we haven't seen, uh, this is their double tech, by the way. One of the ones that we didn't see is the 500 battles, which I got off screen. It's pretty self-explanatory how to do that. You'll probably get that in a normal playthrough. And you'll get the completion one for getting all 15, I believe it is, of the, of whatever they are, the uh, the frames. Uh, you'll need to load up the other path in order to show that off. Uh, 
uh, in order to get that, you need to show off or get the unique ones that you get in Galdo. So you get one for the do not save kid path and one for the save kid path. So once you uh, new game plus or continue plus over your file that's doing that, that, then you'll just get it automatically. You get one for getting all the characters. You get one for using each of the triple techs. So I'm going to be missing one of them. Of all the achievements in the game, I should, I'm should. i only currently missing two. One triple tech that I wasn't able to get because it requires an entire second playthrough and achieving level 99 stars, which again is going to require an entire second playthrough and then three or four levels of third playthrough, which just means you just have to start the game, kill a few bosses, and then beat the game. And then you'll have all 99 stars and it's entirely pointless. We don't need to do that. But you can if you want. So in addition to going over a lot of the plot aspects of things that I found interesting and trying to explain all of that, managed to show off how to get pretty much every achievement in the game and at least talk about the ones that uh, I wasn't able to uh, get. And showed off multiple ways of nuking pretty much every boss in the game. Uh, the ones that I didn't directly show, I at least talked about strategies where you could nuke them. Uh, taking on Cryo Sphinx, you know, now would be a lot easier than it would be otherwise. Uh, let's do a little defense there, another little defense. Get uh, Draggy and Leah together. Interesting thing about these two is we get Draggy Rider. It only makes sense to team the dragon up with the uh, with the crazy uh, Amazon lady or prehistoric girl or whatever you want to call her. So this uses Big Breath, level 7, along with Triple Kick, also level 7. <laughs> um, that's just ridiculous. Also adorable, but ridiculous. Oh well, what can you do? Yeah, the uh, a lot of the text just there's no real need to do any of them. Surge is so overpowered in this game that he's basically a one-man army. If you set up your other characters to only buff Surge throughout almost the entire game, you're going to be fine and you're not going to really have any issues. Anyway, let's get out of there, and then I can switch up my party to characters that I might actually want to use. Who's equipped? Marcy equipped still? I have no idea who's still equipped with actual gear. Not that it matters, because there's nobody else to uh, fight at the moment. Yeah, they were both set up. Okay, perfect. Yeah, that pretty much sums it up for all of the triple techs. Uh, again, in order to get the uh, one for Razzly, I already gave you the whole list of things. Requires Water Dragon Isle in home world, not another world. But now that we have our entire group of characters back together, now we can go around and do a lot of the little scenes that I missed over the course of the game. This is what I'm going to be focusing on next time. This is the burnt out one. I wanted the one in Homeworld. Now, one thing I don't know is where every single character goes when they're not in your active party. Sometimes when you go on the SS Invincible, Fargo will be in his room. Other times he won't be. I think it is somewhat determined by the character party that you bring with you. I had brought Riddell to try and talk to Karsh here, and Karsh wasn't here. He wasn't in my party, he just wasn't here. But Fargo, sometimes he's here, sometimes he's not. I wonder if he's not here because I have Marcy in the party. And there you go. Sometimes he'll show up here and sometimes he won't. I wonder if he's located in a different place afterward, because you would think that he might have some type of dialogue exchange with his daughter, but for some reason he's just not here. 
and the one time that I had been trying to explore when he wasn't here, I had explored the whole ship and I didn't find him. So I don't know where he would be. Uh, Kid, I when she's not in the party, I'm not sure where she is either. There's a few kind of conversations that I would think might exist if you brought certain characters to talk to her, but I don't know where she would go. Now, I haven't been to every single area in the game trying to figure out where a lot of the NPCs happen to or all of our characters are sitting and waiting. But I guess it seems as though some of the characters show up and some of them don't. Um, I think Guile goes back to Termina and like certain characters are in logical places and some of them just aren't. Um, I, Riddell and most of, and Viper and most of the Dragoons end up staying on the ship. I would suspect Korsha goes back home. Uh, Norris, I think he waits at Viper Manor. I would guess Nikki goes back to his uh, ship in Termina. Lucia goes back to the lab. Orcha, I don't know where Orcha goes. I, I know he's in the, uh, he's on the ship there. He's cooking on the ship. Zappa, we've already seen where he goes. Razley, I would suspect, ends up on uh, Hermit's Hideaway in Homeworld. Oshel goes back to Arnie. I would guess you go back to Arnie. Since you're the variant that's from there. We already saw where you were. You go home. You go to your childhood home. Janice is always down in the Grand Slam. I don't know where Harley goes either. Uh, Mickey. Where does Mickey go? wonder if she's just on the uh, on the ship or... Yeah, maybe she's either on the uh, Mickey ship or she's on Fargo's ship. In, uh, I guess she's from Homeworld, so... Lena, I would presume, just goes back to uh, another world. That would be my... Or no, because there's no one there. Actually, now that I think about it, we're right here anyway. She's actually from here. Put her in the lead. Can't let outsiders in. But it's Lena. She lives here. Yeah, they uh, just prevent you from doing anything in Arnie Another World for the rest of the game. Okay. Well, you learned something. So, yeah, I have no idea where she goes. Uh, Draggy and Starkey we saw in uh, on Hermit's Hideaway. Sprig goes back to Sprig's place. Mojo, I have no idea where Mojo goes. Uh, Skelly, I would guess, goes to his grandmother's. Uh, Greco, I would guess, goes back to his home. Uh, we saw you go to Hermit's Hideaway. I, I would guess that you go back up to Viper Manor, where your place is. Fungi, I have no idea where he goes. Maybe back to uh, another, or, um, Whatever it is, uh, Shadow Forest. Irene's, I believe, is in Marvel. Mel probably goes home. I would suspect Leah goes back to... Or no, Leah was in uh, in Hermes Highway as well. Doc goes back to Galdiv. I would suspect so does Stina. Snef, we've seen on the ship. Van, uh, he goes home. Uh, Groybik don't know where Groybik goes. Pierre goes back to Termina. Oral Hog goes back to Galdov. And Pip is on the uh, SS Invincible? Yes. This Pip is from another world. So yeah, I know where most of the characters go. The two that I really would like to know about is Harley and Kit. Is those two, I'm not exactly sure where they go. Anyway. I just figured I'd talk about a few things there. So yeah, next time we'll see a bunch of connections. I'll probably 
uh, be doing a lot of jump cutting around in that episode as I try new things. Because I tried a bunch of combinations of characters, but now I have some more characters that I didn't have before. So it'll be interesting to see what types of interactions we can get. Some of them I will know about, and some of them I probably won't. But anyway, that's all for this one. And I'll see you guys next time.